This is Novel Marketing, the show for novelists who aren't necessarily fond of marketing, but still want to become best-selling authors. Episode 157. I'm James L. Rubart, but call me Jim. And as always, the co-pilot seat is being filled by Thomas Umstead Jr., author, speaker, serial entrepreneur, owner of Author Media, and an unofficial historical scholar. <laughs> what can I say? I love history, although I don't know if I'd consider myself to be a scholar. <laughs> he is a scholar, folks. I'm serious. He is a scholar. You ask him any question about history. Well, I guess, Thomas, you can only talk for about two hours on any subject, right? <laughs> this is why I don't have more friends. Every topic ends up being, oh, well, actually, if you understand the historical background of this, blah, blah, 20 hours later, everyone's asleep. So <laughs> <laughs> they are not asleep. They are not asleep. <laughs> uh, some exciting news. Novel Marketing was recently named in the, in the top 30... Uh, uh, marketing podcasts uh, on all of podcasting by Feedspot. So thank you for Feedspot for saying that we're one of the top 30 podcasts and uh, you can check out their list at feedspot.com. We'll have a link to it in the show notes. In this episode, guys, we're going to talk to you a, about press kits. And if some of you right now are saying press kit now, what? is that exactly? And why do I need it? Well, this is the episode for you. So Thomas, what is a press kit? Let's start with that. So a press kit is a page on your website. Uh, at least that's what it is right now. Uh, that is everything a journalist needs to talk about you. <laughs> now, back in the day, uh, Jim, uh, you may actually remember these days, they were actual packets that you would like put in the mail. You'd hand them to someone, yeah. a government employee who would then deliver them and they would have your photos and they'd be like actual physical photos you could touch and press releases and other information like that. Is, is this true that these used to exist in the real world? They did. They did. Back when I was working in radio, you had, you had one of the big decisions was, okay, we got to get the right folder. You know, <laughs> what are the cuts and the slits we're going to have so we can slip a card in there and we can slip this in here and we can make it stand out. And if you can picture your basic folder that opens up and then in one side, it's got the text and on another side, it's got the photos. Yes, these things were, these things were very real and very prolific. <laughs> <laughs> so then they became something that were faxed and then eventually they uh, you know, became PDFs and now they're ideally a page on your website. And you may be like, well, you know, the press doesn't interview me. Why do I need a press kit? And the answer is you need a press kit so the press so they will, will interview <laughs> you. <laughs> and I will say it's not just traditional media like newspaper people or TV journalists or radio people. It's also bloggers look for press kits. Speakers. When I'm talking about an author uh, in a presentation, I want to use them as an example or use their book as an example. I often look for their press kit on their website to get some of the things we'll talk about, like high resolution images. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about why having a press kit is so important, because really every author needs to have a press kit. They're so easy to make. There's no reason not to have one. And the number one reason to have a press kit is that it makes you easier to interview and makes the interviews go better. <laughs> so uh, if you don't want to have have an awkward interview, one of the ways you can help avoid that is to uh, create a press kit. Jim? One of the things that a lot of you have probably done, or at least some of you have done, you've done radio interviews or you've done TV interviews. Well, if somebody is a producer at a radio station and they're trying to set up a bunch of different guests, if they go to somebody's site and they see all these questions that are already there, all they have to do is copy and paste, give it to their host. It makes it a lot easier. Now, a lot of times the host will go off script and they won't end up asking those specific questions, but having those as a backup makes it so much easier for the producer, so much easier for the host. In other words, if I'm a producer and I'm looking for somebody to bring onto the show and author A, B, and C have no questions, no press kit ahead of time, and author D has all that, I'm going to choose author D. It just makes it easier. Yeah, when, back when I had a, my drive time radio talk show, I had two hours of radio to fill every single day <laughs> if it was a sl <laughs> and if it, if it was a busy news week right we had a hurricane coming to town man that episode made itself we'd take calls and we talk about the hurricane but if it was a slow news day i'd just be 
desperate for guests to interview and and the easier they made it the more likely i would be to interview them so be kind to the journalists in your world and they will in turn be kind to you (laughs) so um it also helps make your pr outreach more effective Uh, so the students who are going through our uh, book launch blueprint one of the things we're talking about is you know doing pr outreach and how to get on tv how to get on radio and interviewed on podcasts and a good press kit page will help with that it helps make you more appealing and it makes the other things you're doing more effective um and it gets you in the media more ultimately so that's why to have a press kit now jim and i both decided this week that we would practice what we preach so we actually put together press kits for our websites i had a speaker kit on my website but i didn't specifically have a press kit it was one of those things i kept meaning to do and kept not getting around to it so i finally was like all right i'm gonna bite the bullet and i'm gonna actually make a press kit and uh, it ended up being a really fun process and i got a little bit lost because i was looking up all of the trying to find you know what media sites have mentioned me and uh, you know what newspapers and whatnot and i got lost on the internet googling my name and took me back <laughs> down memory road i was like oh that's right the houston chronicle had me on because of the political things i was doing and anyway it was, a, it was an interesting journey and um so anyway, we'll be sharing some of the things we learned building our own press kits, and we'll have links to our press kits in the show notes if you want to take a look at Jim's and my press kit. Just a real quick look at who looks for press kits, and Thomas intimated a little bit about this, but let's just go specifically through the list of people who might be looking for a press kit on your site. Of course, journalists, magazine, and newspaper, and that's also magazine and newspaper online. It's TV producers, it's radio shows, it's bloggers, it's podcasters, and then one that you might not necessarily think of, but teachers are also looking for press kits. One of the things that I've done often throughout my career is I've been asked to contribute an article or contribute something online to college courses and universities. And that's great exposure for me. And it's really easy to do. But if the teacher does not have the information, it makes the opportunity a lot less likely. Now, let's talk real quick about where to put your press kit. Obviously, it's a page on your website, but that doesn't mean it has to be in your main navigation. Uh, sometimes you're putting information in your press kit that's not found anywhere else. I know authors who will, will only have their email address or only have their phone number listed on the press kit page because they don't want regular people calling them. They only want journalists calling them. And so you may not want to make a big deal about the press kit. And I will say as a journalist, where I am looking for the press kit is in the footer, believe it or not. That Often when I'm like wanting to interview somebody or wanting to talk about somebody on my show because that's the other thing that's used for press kits. It's not just used for interviews. I may be talking about you and I want to go and check out your press kit before I talk about you and I'll never ask your permission to talk to you. And so it's either going to be me getting information from your website or me getting information from other people's websites talking about you. <laughs> what Which do you prefer? Um, I'm going to that footer specifically to look for the press kit. So that's, that's the most important spot uh, to put uh, a link to it. And you may also add a link in your about page. And if talking to a media, the media as a big part of your brand, it's okay to put it in the main navigation, but it's not required. I want to go back to something you said a second ago, Thomas, and that's talking about um, people going uh, to find your press kit. This makes it really easy for these people to check out all the information they need without having to email you, without having to have any contact with you. They can do their research ahead of time and go, yep, Thomas is going to fit or nope, Thomas is not going to fit. So you are making their life much easier much easier when you have that press kit. All right, so let's talk about what to put on this page. We created the page, we're linking to it in the footer, we understand why it's important. Now, what do we put there? And the first thing you wanna include, and the number one thing I am often looking for is high resolution images. And you know an image is high resolution because it has at least four digits worth of pixels. So (laughs) a thousand or more pixels by a thousand or more pixels. Uh, Your 200 pixel by 200 pixel thumbnail is not a high resolution image. And if I'm wanting to put you on a presentation slide, if I'm wanting to put you on TV, if I'm wanting to feature you on my YouTube video, I've got to have an image that will look good in HD. And an HD video is effectively 2000 pixels wide. 
So if I'm wanting to show your face in full screen, I need a version of your photo that is at least 2000 pixels wide. So we're talking high resolution, big megabytes, not the kind of image you want to use really anywhere else in your website because it'll make your website run slow. But as a journalist, I'm wanting it to run slow so I can get that big file. Or another way to do this, you can have your cake and eat it too. You have a thumbnail of your uh, headshot or your book cover and then I click on the thumbnail and it downloads the high resolution version that's like the gold standard of how to do it or the page still loads quickly but I still have access to that high res version Another thing you can do, because it's more than one photo, so you have a chance to put a number of photos down here, because typically if you look at photos on a website, it's it's going to be that one headshot. Or say you're at a writing conference, you're going to be speaking at a writing conference. There's that one headshot of Thomas, but here we can have two or three, maybe even four photos. And that gives you a chance to show a little bit of your personality. For example, you'll see if you choose to go and look at my press kit page, I have a shot of me water skiing, just, the, you know, this wall of water going up behind me. And that's a chance for a journalist or someone to go, oh, well, that's interesting. I, I haven't seen that shocks Broca. It's surprising. It's intriguing. A journalist is going to go, oh, so Jim's a pretty active guy. So it's a way to show a little bit of your personality as well. That's right. The next thing you want to include in your press kit is an extended bio. This is the one thing I still need to work on on my press kit. Uh, I copy and pasted my bio from my speaking introduction. So a speaking introduction bio is very short. You don't want the person introducing you droning on and on about where you went to college. A journalist, on the other hand, really does care about your longer story because they're going to pull out pieces and make their own shorter version of the story. So they're not wanting the list of ingredients for a very specific dish. Like you give a speaking introduction, they're wanting access to the whole pantry, so to speak. So you want to have a longer, more detailed bio and you need to make sure and write it in the third person. So don't say I did this and I did that. Say Thomas Umstead did this. And then Thomas Umstead did that. Use your actual name. It's really important in your bio, especially on the press page, because I may be, if I'm in a hurry copying and pasting straight from your um, press kit page right into my show notes to interview you on my radio show and i want your name to be there uh and like how your name is pronounced little things like that are good to put in your extended bio jim then the next thing you want to think about is frequently asked questions and suggested interview questions and those could be two separate things for example, somebody might say, well, Jim, where do you get your books have often been touted as very unique. Where do you get your ideas? So I'm going to ask that question. That question tells a little bit about me, and it could also be used as an interview question. So you're going to list frequently asked questions that you get as an author, and then you're going to have a list of questions that you know that hosts have enjoyed asking you either in blog interviews or TV or radio interviews. You're going to give them kind of a smorgasbord or a uh, an a la carte menu of questions that they can draw from. Another thing you may consider is doing a show topics uh, section. So for me, I really enjoy being interviewed on people's podcasts. In fact, I was recently on a great podcast called the Pastor Writer Podcast, which is specifically for pastors who are writing books. It's a great podcast. And um, uh, there, you can one thing that makes it easier to be interviewed on podcasts is to have some suggested topics ready to go. And I will say for my uh, suggested questions, I actually took the... Um, uh, questions from the pastor writer conference. <laughs> I use those as my starting point or, uh, from that podcast. And like, I tweak them because it's such great questions. It's a really good podcast. We, we should link to it in the, especially if you nonfiction folks, I talked for 40 minutes about how to go viral in your nonfiction book and blogging and all that. Yeah, um, nice. so, but you put your, put your topics there. And then another thing, this is maybe the most important part of your press kit. So I need you to pay attention. We talked, we teased this last week or saying it again this week, you need to put, your contact information. <laughs> so, uh, journalists are some of the only people in the world who have real deadlines, right? Newspapers get printed. And if you don't have your quote in by the time the newspaper gets printed, you don't have your quote in. And the quote is not there. It is real. When I would go on radio, my show started at five o'clock for the afternoon drive. 
And if I didn't have something by five o'clock, it didn't, I didn't have it. (laughs) And by seven o'clock, the show was over and (laughs) it was a perishable commodity. Like the deadlines are real. And so you need to make it very easy for people to get a hold of you. We talked about this last time, Google voice. Um, I use a a paid service called ring central in addition to Google voice, um, which is my like business line. So it rings to my computer. I could have it ring to my phone and there's an app where it would ring to my phone. I don't want that because I don't want people to call me on my phone. I don't even want people I know to call me on my phone because I'm a millennial <laughs> and I don't like talking on the phone. Uh, but I do want journalists to be able to call me if they have if they need a quote or something. So you put a phone number there, uh, put an email address there. What I did is I created a special email address. It's press at thomasumstat.com. And uh, so, and, and that email just redirects to my real email address. So I can always know if somebody's emailing that address. And if it gets picked up by spammers or whatever, I will know. Uh, and that didn't cost me anything. I just set, set that forward up in Namecheap. And you can go, you can go old school and do what I do. And I, I just put my phone number up there. And so people can call me. I have a policy. If, if I do not, if a number comes up and I don't know the number or the caller ID doesn't come up, I don't answer the phone. And so they can leave a message or they can text me. But for me, I, uh, I've just decided when I was setting up my page, yeah, I don't, I don't care if my number's out there because most people are not going to go to this page unless they have a real purpose for calling me. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Another thing is social media links. Uh, journalists particularly like to follow Twitter. Uh, journalists are really big on Twitter. And to, if you're active on Twitter, if you have a Twitter link to it, uh, Facebook as well. If you have a professional Facebook presence, you can link there. Uh, and then any other social media, this is another place to list them. And then any awards that you have won. Another thing, in some authors do this, some authors don't, but uh, press releases. Uh, what I recommend is to create a special, if you are like an organization or you're putting out press releases, create a special category called press releases on your blog have your press releases be blog posts so which makes them a news release and then on your press kit page show just the um news release blog category posts if you're using divi which is what we recommend this is really easy to do and you can it will automatically update with all of your most recent press releases which is really cool Uh, another thing that you'll want to include is press mentions so journalists like to interview people that other journalists have interviewed because some people are good with the media and some people are not so if somebody's been interviewed by lots of media sources there's a good chance they are good with the media which means it'll be an easy interview (laughs) which is what we want we don't want someone who answers our questions with one word sentences or or on the other hand won't shut up uh this isn't the like how to deal with media topic one one book <laughs> responses yeah, yeah one book responses um but uh you want to show off if you've been talked to from the new york times you want to put them on your uh, website what i did uh, I'm not a big graphic designer, but I took the logos of all the different newspapers and media outlets that have interviewed me and I put them into Keynote, which is like PowerPoint, and I organized them and then I exported that as an image and uploaded that image to my website. So they all the little logos are there and they all look fancy. And and it was a very low tech, easy way to do it. Another way to do it is to hire somebody on Fiverr, which we like to recommend for five bucks, give them a list of all the logos and say, Hey, put together an as seen in graphic with all these logos. I'll pay you five bucks for it. Somebody would be very happy to do that for you on Fiverr. And if some of you are going, boy, I write fiction. I haven't been on a lot of shows. Um, Well, how do I show social authority? I would suggest if you've won awards, make those prominent. And that's what I did. I went through and this actually gave me a chance. It's going to sound like I'm bragging. I don't mean it to come across that way, but I actually had not ever cataloged uh, what awards I had won. And so I had to go back and now, did I win that this year? And I did, did I win for this book? And it gave me a chance. Now I have in one place all the awards or the finalists I've uh, I've had for my novels. And as a journalist, if I go and I see that, I go, oh, oh, this guy has had some success. That gives me the authority where they might uh, perhaps want to interview me. So if you have won awards or you finaled in contests, go ahead and put those up. 
and play to your strengths here. So like Jim's strength is that he wins a lot of awards. And so in on his press kit, he's going to feature that very prominently. For me, my strength is that I get interviewed on lots of podcasts. So I feature on my press page a list of all of the podcast guest interviews. In fact, I even set it up where anytime I do a guest interview, I uh, it gets posted to my website and people can subscribe just to hear my guest interviews on various podcasts around the internet. And so you can subscribe to a podcast that's the thomas uh, umstadt guest interviews podcast <laughs> so it's just <laughs> a variety of different podcasts and we talk about a variety of different topics because i do lots of different topics and i'm able to again with divi just show those blog posts that are that have those podcast interviews so this requires looking in the mirror and be like what are my strengths and, and it's okay to not have one of these sections. If you don't have any press mentions, if you haven't won any awards, if you're not on any podcast, that's okay. Just leave those blank. If all your press kit is, is some high-res photos of you, a really good bio, and some contact information, you know what? That's the main thing the press is looking for. These other things are the frosting. You can have a perfectly good cake without frosting. In fact, some of the best cakes don't have frosting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, a couple other things, though, real quick. Um, a notable speaking appearances can be good uh so do, have you been brought back to give a talk to your alma mater on um writing or something you can put the logo of your university there or other places you've spoken if you do a lot of speaking um any sort of downloads so maybe you have a pdf version of your press kit uh you can put that there uh, you can list any books you've written i think this is a very good idea if you have a dozen books so you're like i don't get mentioned by the press but i've written these dozen books list all dozen books and link to the book pages uh for for each book on your website and if you're using my book table it makes that really easy and then of course links to uh recent interviews that you've done so I know this is a bit of an overwhelming list, but we will have them in the show notes. And then again, we'll have our press kit uh, examples of Jim and I. And on the Facebook group, I know a lot of you are on the Novel Marketing Podcast Facebook group. Go ahead and create a press kit and share a link to it in the Facebook group. We'd love to take a look at it. Maybe you might even get some feedback on, on uh, what you're doing yeah, and maybe ways idea. to make it better. So we want to make this a practical podcast where we're putting these things into practice. And by looking at each other's press kits, you'll get other ideas on how to do it. This episode of the Novel Marketing Podcast is brought to you by the Novel Marketing Five-Year Plan to Becoming an Overnight Best-Selling Author. And Thomas and I joke about it being overnight. It, it, it takes on average 10 years for somebody to hit their stride as a novelist. One of the things that excites us about this plan is we guarantee you will cut that time in half if you follow the plan um, to becoming a best-selling author. It's basically a career plan uh, that takes you through each quarter what you need to be doing in that quarter to be successful. So if you ever feel lost, if you ever feel like, gosh, I don't know if I'm working on the right things right now to advance my writing career, this plan really does fix that. And we've gotten incredible feedback from the people going through it. And again, we've warned you, but we'll warn you again. The most common feedback we get is that they can't believe how cheap the five-year plan is. So the price is going to be going up. So you want to get it now before the price goes up. And uh, as always, is patrons get 50% off. So if you want to save some money on the plan, uh, first become our patron at novelmarketing.com. And speaking of patrons, we have a featured patron this month. We do. The, our featured patron this month is Mary DeMuth. And she has just launched a book called Seven Deadly Friendships. And Mary is part of our mastermind group. I think you know that uh, we've talked about that before. Mary is part of Thomas's and my mastermind group. And she also is our partner in the book launch course that we are in the midst of going through right now. And Mary, uh, boy, she knows how to launch books. Yes. But she also knows how to write. She's an incredible writer. She goes to the truth of subjects. And this book, I think, for anyone who has ever had a difficult relationship, i.e. all of us, I think this book um, could be really powerful. Uh, we did get our hands on a pre-release copy. I haven't read it, but Thomas, didn't Margaret pick up a copy of this? Yeah, she couldn't put it down. I I handed it to her and then I was at a conference all day and I came back and she basically finished it. <laughs> so she, she couldn't, she just couldn't wow. put it down. She did the whole thing in one sitting more or less. And uh, she was like, this is a really amazing book. It gave me a lot to think about. And uh, if you ha are wondering why 
uh, weird people keep being attracted to you, <laughs> this book may be uh, the book for you. She talks about seven different kinds of um you know predatory people or kind of inappropriate people and like what to look for how to avoid them it's a really good like practical life skills book uh, so anyway mary thank you for being a patron of the novel marketing podcast okay thomas before we sign off real quick uh got to give us a baby update i mean we're coming down to the very very short strokes here uh yeah still no baby <laughs> so we're, <laughs> we're waiting uh the baby okay. uh seems to be ready but the baby is also not ready so uh my wife and i are both very ready to have the baby so or at least we think we are <laughs> ask me again in a couple of weeks i think we are 10 or 11 day, days away from the due date so we are approaching impending uh the day for the baby and if you want to see photos of the baby i will post them to the facebook group first well i mean i'll send them to my family first but uh, <laughs> yes before we mention them on the podcast i will i will share a photo on the facebook group so another reason to join the free novel marketing facebook group you've been listening to james l rubart and thomas umstead jr on the novel marketing podcast giving you novel ideas on how to promote yourself and your writing offline online and everywhere in between thank you so much for listening.